So let's do a review of this, which is the Honda SH125. Uh, this is a 2020 model, I bought it in September 2020. So I've had it about uh, eight months, nine months. And uh, I want to give you not so much a, a detailed review, but a, an overview as an, an owner. Uh, a little bit about me, background wise, uh, when I was uh, 16 I got my first 50cc, it's a MTX, uh, 50cc Honda, kind of a trial bike, uh, 50cc, great bike, loved it, uh, as a 16 year old having a bit of independence was uh, awesome, uh, and then after a I, I guess about a year I purchased a CB125 it was a CB125 TD which is the Super Dream uh, which is a twin cylinder twin exhaust 125 I loved it uh, electric start um, I remember it being bloody heavy but uh, fantastic bike I think I'm going to go straight on here even though you're not supposed to um, so oh, I was Monday to Friday that's fine yeah and then uh, when I was probably 18 I got my first car and so I didn't have a bike anymore um, now late 40s and so there was a considerable gap of uh, non motorcycling um, but uh, last year I sadly made redundant uh, after a, a long time at an airport um, as a result of um, mainly coronavirus and uh, some nice redundancy money and so I decided I'd get a bike a scooter uh, so the reason I chose this motorbike uh, over over others was primarily I, I wanted a twist and go uh, that really appealed to me ease of riding I was a little anxious about returning to two wheels uh, after after four or more and so uh, I just really liked uh, you know the reviews I watched and of other scooters I just really appealed to me uh, this particular model because you know there's a lot of scooters out there a lot of very good scooters uh, uh, even in just the Honda range uh, there's the I believe biggest selling in Europe uh, PCX uh, and and the other bike I was really uh, it was really close between this and and the new Super Cub so the Super Cub uh, one two five and I really liked the super cub I just really liked the design I kind of liked it was twist and go sort of uh, although it has a kind of semi-automatic four-speed gearbox uh, what won it for me with uh, the SH was storage space uh, because one of my primary reasons for getting a scooter uh, was as a mode of transport to commute to and from work I'd gone from a well paid job to um, I don't know what uh, and therefore the economics was a, a, uh, a big factor plus it was fun which helped and so the SH went out because it comes with under the seat storage 
uh, more than the previous SH125s because the fuel tank has been moved below the rider's feet uh, and therefore the fuel tank that used to be under the seat has gone and therefore there is more space and they also come with a top box as well, a 35 litre top box so uh, this is more than, uh, more than adequate storage wise uh, for me and so that was the, that was the primary reason. Uh, I, I'm not specifically a Honda person. It just happens that the three bikes that I've owned have all been Hondas. So how's it been over the past uh, past months since ownership? Well, it's been bloody fantastic. Uh, I passed. I had to take a CBT uh, and. Uh, although there's no pass and fail, or pass or fail, uh, I, I obtained the CBT certificate. And the next day I went to pick up the bike. I purchased it from uh, Fowler's Motorcycles in Bristol. And uh, it was purchased brand new. And... Uh, I've done just over 2,000, 2000 miles now. And as I said, I've been really, really happy. The fuel consumption, uh, I've been blown away. <laughs> it's, uh, it's between 120 and 130 mpg. I've averaged, you know, the average kind of varies because uh, the, the job I'm doing at the moment uh, sees me in different places uh, on different days and so the type of riding that I do uh, is mixed sometimes fast dual carriageway or dual carriageways uh, and sometimes roads like this and sometimes city centre riding the biggest the biggest enjoyment for me as a, as a driver uh, going on to a motorcycle uh, has been filtering uh, the ability to pass in between queuing traffic or past queuing traffic is bloody awesome uh, as long as it's done safely and, and a channel that I really recommend for any new riders out there is Roadcraft Nottingham uh, and he does a brilliant set of uh, videos that's really really helped me uh, including riding in wet weather which I was uh, anxious about too and um, filtering uh, and I believe one of the um, bits of advice that he did is, is not filtering um, too fast so not I, I tend not to go more than 10 miles an hour more than the moving traffic and if they're moving any more than uh, a few miles an hour I, I don't uh, I don't filter and that's proven good for me so yes fuel fuel consumption uh, I've been very pleased with filtering buddy <laughs> it's great what are the other um, pros well you can see I've got mounted to this bike I've got my phone and I use that um, primarily just to have the radio on. I my helmet. I, I have uh, some earphones, so I just have the radio playing quietly in the background. I could still hear external noises, but it just helps pass the time. And a GPS unit. Very rarely use that. I'm recording this route today. I'm just going out for a drive. It's mid-April in the UK lockdown uh, is is scaling back so rules are being relaxed and so I'm taking this opportunity it's a beautiful morning there's a high air balloon out there I don't know if you can see it taking this opportunity to just go for a ride it's it's chilly it's been uh, frost through the night and that leads me on to weather uh, what's it like riding because it's not always like this in the UK. Uh, do you know what? It's been all right. Um, I, I don't mind it. Uh, I, I've got some proper wet weather gear uh, and 
I find I don't get too wet and I don't get too cold and uh, I've been happy. Uh, it's quite liberating riding in, in wet weather and uh, it's, it has not been as bad as, as what I thought. I do not ride though if it's wet and the temperature is, is below really four uh, because if there's any risk of ice on the road uh, that's not for me. Two wheels on, on an icy surface is not a good combination. Uh, it's not a good combination in any vehicle, but uh, especially so on a bike. Other positives, running costs we said are great. Um, servicing, well, the only service this has required since uh, since I purchased it is a 600 mile service. Uh, and that's a fairly low low um, low task service, so not many steps required. Uh, and I completed that one on my, by myself. Uh, in fact, I've got a bit of a thing for oil changes. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, I, I enjoy doing them. Uh, and I actually did the first one at 300 miles. Uh, I did another at 600, and I did another at uh, just over a thousand. Uh, the reason I did um, two more than is, is technically required by Honda is uh, the first one at 300, I think as the engine is wearing in, uh, there's considerable metallic debris in the oil uh, and you could see it was almost like a shimmer, like glitter in the oil, so I'm glad I did that at 300. I did the other one at 600 because that's what the book calls for, the maintenance schedule. Uh, and there were still traces of, of uh, metal material uh, and so I did another one after that just to just to ensure as the engine is, is continuing to wear in, bed in, that uh, I haven't got, uh, I limit the amount of debris or reduce the amount of debris metal that's floating around in the oil, if that makes sense. Uh, I also fitted on the first th service, first oil change, uh, a um, sump plug with a magnet on the end, so it's a, it was an MP01, and uh, it's basically got a, a fairly powerful magnet uh, on the end, and that attracts any any metals, metallic uh, objects that, that are floating past it. Uh, and I was amazed how much was on it, so that, I, I'm really pleased uh, I bought that. Uh, and the other uh, oil change I did was in the final drive, that's um, straightforward. Uh, fairly small amount of oil, in fact a litre of oil can do both the uh, the engine oil and oh, the balloon look. engine oil and the final drive, and it's the same oil uh, that's used in both, I've been using 10W30, uh, fully synthetic. So I'm sure there's more pros. I might, um, they might be out of order. I might come back to those. Uh, any cons? Well, uh, this is probably not directly related to the bike. Um, however, vulnerability on the roads um, uh, does what is a concern to me, a continuing concern. Um, both from other road users and also debris in the road as well, something you don't really consider, a lot of uh, four-wheel drivers don't consider, it's still a risk, but um, not as great as on two wheels. So other drivers, yes, I remember riding back the first day, so back from Fowler's, and I was, uh, the, the route included a dual carriageway, and as I proceeded up the dual carriageway, the size of cars was, and the speed they were going was was really, uh, really quite intimidating. On the whole, though, on the whole, uh, I find drivers have been brilliant. I've had a couple of vehicles pull out on me. Um, that was due, uh, I, I believe, to them not seeing me, which is why I expect every vehicle to pull out. Um, so. Uh, 
I, I don't speed. I'm generally not a, a fast. I'll correct that. I'm not a fast driver. And I drive. I like to believe I drive appropriately to the road conditions. The other um, uh, good advice is a YouTuber. Uh, uh, Firefighter Dan, I believe. Apologies if I got the name wrong. I, I tried to remember to link it in the description below. That recommends essentially having four states. So imagine three light bulbs in your helmet green, amber, and red. And To um, as you as you assess the road conditions ahead, to change the colour of these bulbs. So currently, really amber because I've got junctions. Uh, it's a 30 miles an hour. There's lots of driveways, so there, there's hazards around. So I, I, I would be in amber now. Anyway, back to the bike. So negatives, yes, uh, increased risk, there, and there is an increased risk. The um, mirrors on the bike uh, were not brilliant from, from um, factory. Uh, in fact, they were awful, <laughs> really poor. They were too close together. I'm a white person, uh, and all I could see was the majority of me. No use whatsoever. So what I've done is I fitted an extension kit. You may be able to see it there. Uh, and I also put the blind spot reflectors on. Uh, and that's helped immensely. Uh, they that means they're wider than myself, and I can see behind me, which is the whole point of mirrors. Uh, and so they're much, much better. They're the same mirrors. I've just fitted them on extenders, and there is a video I've done um, showing that. So mirrors were very good. Um, the Honda OEM screen, which is fitted here, was a little too tall uh, and the top of the windscreen sat right in my eye line uh, and I, it was a distraction uh, and so I did purchase a Givy a much smaller windscreen um, which um, helped but it was just going into winter and it was cold and there was more air and I'm older and, and so uh, what I did is I refitted the OEM and uh, I cut off about an inch and a half and it's brilliant now uh, I, I'm really pleased with that under any more negatives uh, not really I mean cost cost of the motorbike was was about 3600 I did have the optional um, windscreen and also um, knuckle guides are they blue cord or you know these these um, protectors just forward of the brakes um, so yeah, three thousand six hundred. Uh, the uh, uh, the cost of buying the equipment then was was quite a lot. So it's definitely um, worth factoring that in if you're considering buying a bike. You know, helmets and and gloves and jackets and waterproofs and shoes, boots. Uh, you know, that all adds up. But it it's not you know it's not a huge. It's not a huge additional cost, it's just an additional cost. So there's a new wheel con, so the, the bike has been brilliant. Uh, it's 16 inch wheels on here, uh, and so the ride um, is, is more comfortable than uh, a small wheeled scooter. Uh, the bike does have, oh that was another reason I chose this bike. Um, so it has ABS front and rear uh, on disc brakes and it also has the Honda st Stability Traction Control I forgot what the S stands for uh, HT HSTC uh, and this essentially senses when the wheels are spinning up I believe on acceleration and will prevent or, or help try to prevent a skid uh, this is always on by default you can turn it off but each time you restart the bike 
uh, the system will be on again. I always leave it on. I'm not sure whether it makes a difference to acceleration. Oh, that's another positive. So another positive, uh, and this is great fun. I'm a big chap. Uh, this is a small bike, you know, it's a one, two, five, small. But the acceleration off the lights uh, is bloody brilliant. And so when you do filter to the front of traffic, uh, and I've had numerous occasions, vehicles that kind of, um, you sense they're, they're ready to go blasting past you. Uh, and I beat them off the lights and it's great. I mean, it doesn't last long, probably up to 15, 20 miles an hour. Uh, and as long as the road is, is straight enough or allows it, uh, they do accelerate past, but I'm, I'm so impressed with the acceleration on it. It's, it's brilliant. Um, where are we going, by the way? So I, I'm heading currently to where I used to work which is um, my local airport. And I just thought, because I haven't been up here for a while, I'd just take a look around. I worked up here on and off for about 20, just probably just shy of 25 years. So a fair portion of my existence. And so just taking a look, we're still uh, flight wise, at the moment, uh, there are very few flights operating. I believe only uh, uh, three or four domestic routes are, are operating, uh, and and that's a massive difference from what I mean. We'd just be going into summer operation now uh, with flights departing from you know 0600 through really to to 2100. Um, so yes, it's uh, it's really damaged the aviation industry. Whether that's uh, a good thing or not, I I don't I have no idea. I don't know. Very 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 outside the scope of this uh, <laughs> scooter video. I sh anyway, that is where I'm heading. And you might be able to see there the control tower. Uh, it's in a strange setting, Bristol Airport. It's uh, on top of a hill. It's just a, just over 600 foot above sea level. And so in um, bad weather, it tends to get fogged out or because there's not an awful lot, I'll try and show you, you'll be able to see uh, the Severn and, and the Wales, the country. Uh, there's not a lot stopping it. Winds are generally westerly, or westerly predominantly, predominantly, and, and so it, does, it it can be a very windy place as well, which makes landings very exciting. We're going to go up here, which is um, around the back end of the runway first of all. Mind the gravel. I'm sorry, I'm going to venture off a second and just uh, anyone interested. Uh, one of these houses on the right used to be the Commandant's uh, house. The Commandant was, um, I guess, kind of like a, a CEO. And they were responsible for the airport uh, up until... 2000, just before 1999, uh, it was uh, council-owned. Uh, I used to work just there. There used to be hangars there, and now it's apron space. You can see a couple of twoies. Yeah, just up that road it was. Just up, and now it's all apron. Anyway, that's progress. I'm sorry for those that come to watch a uh, uh, scooter video, I will return to scootering. 
So just on our left here is the taxiway and just uh, slightly further left of that is the runway. You can tell by the windsock that they're using runway 09 so or likely to be uh, so uh, landing easterly um, towards the sun although likely no aircraft landing at the moment. This is the approach lighting for zero 09. Anyway, the bike. Back to the bike, because that is why you are here. So, would I recommend uh, the SH125? Well, uh, absolutely I would. However, let me just say, uh, this is the only scooter that I've, I've really ridden, so I don't know what the others are like, and they uh, may be bloody brilliant too. I don't know. Um, what I do know is, after parting with 3,600 and having it for eight months, having the bike for eight months, uh, and covering 2,000 miles, uh, I've been really, really happy. I think the only thing, and this is neither a negative or a positive, I do like I, um, the way the PCX, uh, I know Forza does it, and I perhaps Yamaha have the arrangement where they're not really a step through, so kind of a step over, uh, and you can put your feet in, in kind of two positions, so you can put them flat on the floor, or slightly forward and up, and I do, I do um, that does appeal to me with the uh, SH125. Let me park up and show you. So there's all the airplanes on the ground, look. This used to be an airport. So with the SH125, you can see you've got the flat bit there uh, and your feet. You've only got one position, essentially, for your feet. Uh, let me show you the around two. You've got the brakes, brakes there. In fact, what I'll do is I'll... Oh, wait. Uh, and the top box, which I said is 35 litres, I'll show you under the seat. So I currently have some stuff in there, but you've got really kind of two compartments. got an air pump in there. Uh, it, it's plenty of room. As I said, I go to work, I've got a change of um, coats and uh, lunch, etc. And, and it's more than enough room. Uh, it is keyless. So it's a keyless motorcycle. Uh, that yeah, I have once uh, ridden, uh, and I was a tap on the shoulders after a few miles. I stopped at some traffic lights, and it was the driver behind had got out of his car and said, "Just let you know, your keys are in your top box." Oh, <laughs> uh, so I had to pull them out, and and that wouldn't have happened with uh, an ignition system that required the key in. Um, so I hang them on the, there's a little shopping, shopping hook just here, and I hang them there. And, uh, so really that's it. I, yeah, overall, really, uh, really, really happy. Uh, and, uh, I hope, I hope to keep this for a few more years yet, uh, until if, when I take my motorbike test, uh, I, I'm really, I, I really do like, uh, the SH350 that's just come out, 2021 model. Um, so, but who knows? Who knows what the future has in store? Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been useful for those making a, a decision. Um, this is one of the best-selling scooters in the world. Uh, yet, strangely enough, um, there's none too many uh, videos on it. So, I, th I thought I'd help those that maybe uh, are um, trying to decide which is best for them. Uh, what I will say is is go to um, dealers uh, and sit on the bikes and, and do test rides if you can um, because that's really going to help because what you've been listening to uh, is is my opinion uh, and, and my opinion may vary greatly from yours so, so go to dealers, sit on as many bikes as you can, get a feel for them uh, and then... Um, uh, and ride them if you can. Uh, and, but good good luck. And as I said, if you do choose the SH125, I think you'll be uh, really happy with it.
Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.